Hey everybody and welcome back to my top 50 board games of all time 2019 edition. Uh, today I'm continuing from number 30 to number 21 so let's get started at number 30. So at number 30 I have Colosseum. Now this is a game with a really cool theme. Um, it's a three to five player game where each player has control of their own like arena or kind of uh, you know, stadium and what you're trying to do is you're trying to collect all these different actors and gladiators and props to try and put on the best show possible um, and you do that by auctioning for these different tiles and then there's this really cool interactive negotiation phase where you can trade tiles for different tiles um, and it also has a bit of role to move into it as well where you're trying to get these different like, senators into your coliseum and you can expand your coliseum to kind of increase the probability of doing so. Um, a really kind of nicely weighted game. I think it's pretty much, um, you know, complex appropriate for families, uh, maybe just a step above, but a fantastic game by one of my favourite designers, Wolfgang Kramer, and um, always a joy to play this one. And it has a really cool scoring mechanism, mechanism as well, because over the five rounds you play, only the best round that you score counts as your score. So there's no kind of cumulative points. It's just like your one-off best show is your final score for the game. So that's Colosseum, uh, a brilliant game. Next at number 29, I have last year's number 14 with The Castles of Mad King Ludwig. Now this is a tile placement game with a huge twist. Um, you are basically collecting all these different rooms and trying to build the most, um, the most, you know, the coolest castle as possible um, according to this criteria that the king wants. So he might want loads of round rooms or loads of large rooms or loads of um, activity rooms and stuff like that. And you're trying to basically forge this castle by placing them together. And, um, you know, it's a spatial puzzle to it as well because certain tiles fit in certain ways. You want some rooms connecting to other rooms, but you don't want some rooms touching other rooms. Um, a really cool theme has this awesome mechanism to it where each round somebody's the master builder and they choose um, the value of each of these tiles and then the other players can choose to buy them or not and if they do buy them they, the money goes to the master builder but the master builder will actually get to pick those tiles last so he's got to really think about how he's going to price those tiles um, in order to get what he wants but also to get some money in return as well. Um, awesome game that is the castles of Mad King Ludwig. At number 28, we have last year's number 21 with Tifa Tashin. Now, this is um, not an overly well-known game, but I do preach about it quite a lot. Uh, it's a party-style game that plays uh, four to eight players, takes about 20 to minutes to half an hour to play, um, and you are basically taking the roles of these corrupt politicians. Um, one player is going to be the, um, the president, and he's going to draw an amount of money cards equal to the number of players, and he's going to divide that money up however he sees fit. And, um, and then depending on what the president's done, everybody's going to kind of uh, play a card simultaneously, and they can either vote to keep the president in power, they can vote to kick him out, they can kind of blackmail each other, you can um, bribe each other to kind of vote the president in or out. You you can take from the treasury um, just one of the best kind of simultaneous card selection games that I've ever played um, so much fun and probably the most interactive in terms of you know negotiation and kind of um, you know talking to one another and trying to get what you want and manipulate each other this game is an absolute delight um, this version as I said isn't available anymore I don't believe but it has been reprinted in um, you know in in the western well in, in America and England I think um, under the name of Good Critters, which is basically uh, the same game but with a different kind of um, mafia style theme, but exactly the same game, but one to definitely check out. That is Tifa Tashin or Good Critters. At number 27, I have um, Marvel Legendary. Now, this is actually one of the first games that got me into the hobby of board gaming. I've pretty much got every single um, expansion that comes with the game. So I've got boxes and boxes of the stuff, hence why I'm not showing it you. I have to show a picture instead because all my stuff would fall out. But um, probably one of the best uh, deck builder games I've ever played. If you like Marvel, this one is the most thematic. You can literally play as any hero against any villain under any kind of scenario. You've got loads of different like schemes and stuff which kind of um, completely change how the game plays and the winning conditions and stuff like that. But very thematic, very fun, um, and it's cooperative as well. Uh, you can the game does recommend you play semi -co cooperatively, where one player is kind of the ultimate winner if they score the most points. But I just play it as a cooperative game. But a fantastic deck builder and uh, definitely the best one I've ever played. That is Marvel Legendary. Uh, at number 26, I have Firenze. 
Now, this is the second game by Andreas Sterling I've got on this list, uh, the first one being Gugong. Um, this one was out of print for quite a while, but I believe last year it got reprinted, um, hence why I've got it. It's an absolutely uh, great game where you are trying to uh, build these different towers in order to fulfill contracts. Um, it has this really cool mechanism where uh, there's a whole row of cards and all those cards have different kind of powers on. They could be positive or negative, but they also have different um, these different kind of roofs on them or these different blocks which you, you use to build your towers. And basically you can choose to take the furthest one on the left and take that card and all the blocks on it, but you can also pay one um, brick more for each card you want to go up that row on, which kind of makes the bottom ones accumulate more and more bricks and making the incentive go up for the next players. And when you get negative card, that's that decision of whether you're going to, you know, am I going to take that negative punishment in order to get all these really high quality bricks to build the best towers? Um, a fantastic, classic feeling Euro, um, that is Firenze. At number 25, I have last year's number 13 with Mexica. Now, this is again by Wolfgang Kramer, um, who uh, made Colosseum and um, also made Six Nymphs which are two really, really favorite games of mine. Um, but Mexica is uh, an area control style game. Um, this version here by uh, the Super Meeple is a recent reprint, but the quality of the production is absolutely fantastic. You're basically forging this map um, by placing these different rivers to create these different areas. And you are trying to control those areas by placing down the, um, your different temples. And you're using action points to do so. So every time you get like six action points and you can spend, you know, one action point to put a level one temple down and so on. Um, you can also have to spend action points to move your little pawn around the map and travel down the lakes and stuff. Um, a real abstract style feeling game, but one that is absolutely brilliant. It's pretty quick. It plays in about an hour. Um, it can be pretty nasty as well as you can block other players off and shut people out of areas. But a really thinky, intelligent game. This is Mexica. Um, at number 24, I actually have last year's number one. So a drop of, um, you know, 24 places there. Um, that is um, Rising Sun. So Rising Sun is um, pretty much, well, it, it last year, this time last year, I was absolutely enamored by it. Um, it was, well, it's my number one game of the year. So um, it, it's a game by Call Me or Not, or, or Simon, I think they're called now, or Come On. Um, it's uh, by Eric Lang, who is prolific for making these kind of huge dudes on the map game with um, really cool themes. Uh, this game has some really awesome mechanisms. Um, it's set in kind of feudal Japan, but in a fantastical version, you've got all these different monsters and all these different kind of clans with their unique powers. And you are basically trying to control these areas, um, trying to get points, trying to uh, win battles using this blind bidding system. Um, the table presence of this game is absolutely out of this world. Probably one of the best produced games I've ever seen in my life. Um, it's fallen a bit for me because um, I think I've kind of played it out a bit. I've played it quite a few times now, not really much else for me to explore. And um, yeah, that's, that's it really. I mean, still got not really got a bad word to say about it whatsoever, but just the luster of it has worn off a bit for me. That is number 24, Rising Sun. At number 23, I have last year's number 31, so a bit of a climb there for the Castles of Burgundy. Now, I actually had a bit of a spell where I didn't fancy playing this game at all, and when I played it again this year, it just completely just resurged my kind of enthusiasm for it. It really is an excellent game by one of my favourite designers, Stefan Feld. Um, this one is so pure in its mechanisms. You are basically using dice to draft tiles, using those tiles to place them on your board and um, basically get combinations to get as much points as possible. It's what we call a point salad game where you get as low, pretty much get points for doing anything at all. And it's very satisfying. Um, and just, yeah, has a really nice tempo to it. Plays exceptionally well at two players. And really, it's just a delight to play. And one of the best kind of, or one of the most, kind of fundamental Euro games that I think kind of strategy gamers really need to get and try out and introduce to new players as well because the rules overhead are very low but the the you know the depth and feel of it is um is more than warranted in terms of its strategy and stuff like that. So that is the Castles of Burgundy, just an absolute modern classic. Uh, at number 22 I have last year's number 18 with High Society. Now, this is a Rainer Knizia auction style game, so another auction style game. This one has a really cool twist, plays really quickly. Um, I believe it's three to five players and takes about, I said, what, 20 minutes to play. You are essentially um, start with a hand of cards, uh, all the different values of num uh, money on them, 
and you're using those cards to bid on these points cards. And they're very simple, just number from one to 10. And you're also bidding not to take negative cards as well. Um, but the cool thing about this game is the person with, obviously the person with the most points at the end of the game wins, but the person who spent the most money is automatically um, loses the game. So you, if you, you've got to be really careful about kind of weighing your bids compared to what other people are bidding, because as I said, if you spend more money than anybody else or, or everybody else, then you're automatically disqualified. So somebody might have all the points, but they're not going to win because they've spent more money than everyone else. So that's a really kind of, um, you know, cerebral decision. And you've got to kind of weigh out what, what you're willing to bid and, you know, if you are actually going to win. So a really great game. Um, that's high society. And finally, for this list, I have a new game with Awkward Guests. Now, Awkward Guests um, has been reprinted in 2019 in English. Um, I think it was printed, um, sorry, released the year before in, um, in Spanish. But this one is one of the, well, it is the best deduction game I've ever played. Um, I'm not, I wouldn't say I was a huge deduction fan, but when I played this, this one just completely took that genre into a whole new dimension. Um, it's basically a murder mystery, as you'd probably expect. You're trying to work out who the murderer was, what weapon he used, and um, what route he, sorry, if he had an accomplice or not, and um, his motive as well. You're doing that by basically drawing cards, and all those cards have different information on them, and you are using that to tick off in your sheet, but the sheet is not just your standard, you know, boring deduction. There's actually a physical kind of blueprint of a map and you've got to cross off routes, which kind of means that they access certain areas in the house to get certain weapons. So the deduction is really juicy and really engaging. And um, it really does feel so satisfying when you, you know, you work out who's done it and the race to beat other players to do it is interesting as well because you are using this kind of system where you are trading cards with one another, kind of exchanging like for like information based on the kind of pertinence of that information. Um, I really couldn't recommend this game enough. It is an absolute delight to play and um, just so much fun. That is Awkward Guests. So that was another 10 really excellent games. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this list. I will continue, um, you know, continue my countdown going from number 20 to number 11 in my next uh, video. So if you have enjoyed it, please hit like and subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos too. For everyone else, I'll see you next time on Chairman of the Board. Bye.